Hello everyone, KJ4YZI with Ham Radio Concepts and we're checking out the 9700 again. We've been playing with this the last couple days, super impressed with this radio, just in love with it. And I want to show you what makes this radio just that much more powerful. Now, for those who say, well, that's overpriced for just a dual band or a tri-band. No, this is way more than that. And some people have already commented and said, Eric, your scope doesn't look like you've done anything with it. It looks like it is out of the box. And you're right, it was. So we're going to go through those settings and play with the scope, tailor it to your needs or my needs, change it up a little bit, and show you what makes it powerful for VHF and UHF and 1.2 gigahertz. I'll be using VHF at the moment, because that's the antenna I have up for the moment. So first we're going to go, if your radio looks like this, click on Menu and go to Scope. Okay? Now, if you tap the uh, expand button this is expand and set we'll just tap that once that gets your scope uh, bigger and I have VFOA only on two meters and you can see the waterfall now here's what happens uh, you're you're looking at the waterfall and and you're looking for signals some of those signals may be buried in noise on your waterfall and the way it looks out of the box can be useful but there's other ways of setting it up to really dig out a weak signal so here's what I'm going to do I'm going to show you a couple um, ways of doing this and, and really what, what gives you the advantage of this. The first thing is if you hold the set button here, it takes you into the scope settings. Now there's a lot of stuff in here that you could tailor to your scope and I'll explain some of these things. Scope during transmit. This is basically as you're talking, you'll see your audio on the waterfall here in the middle when you're talking. Okay, So uh, if for instance I grabbed the mic and said KJ4YZI, that's the scope that you're seeing here. Okay, um, if you turn it off, it's just going to be nothing when you're transmitting. So I leave that on. Max hold is the next one. Now, max hold, there's three settings, off, on, and 10 second hold. And this is what happens. I'm going to show you that in a second. Max hold is basically like a peak hold. If there's a, a signal at all that happens to show up on the screen, it's going to hold that right there for 10 seconds or indefinitely, depending on how you set it. And that can give you a good idea if you're really contesting or looking for a weak signal that just happen to blip in there for a second, you could see where it was even when it's gone. So it's kind of like a history marker. I turn that off. And the reason is because I want to see what is just in real time. And now you can see turning that off, that little light blue line is gone in the back. All you're seeing, those little spikes are real time. And that's basically noise. But we're going to go into a couple little signals and show you how that changes. Um, we'll go back into the settings here. Now, there's uh, this, the center type display and the marker position. So the way the scope is set up now, you can see that it's 50 kilohertz by, uh, you know, the, the depth here. 25 kilohertz from the center line this way, 25 kilohertz from the center line this way. And you can see on the bottom, you know, if your signal is over here, it's 15 kilohertz down from where you're at. That could be useful in one way. And when you're turning the dial, you can see that it's moving your line here your line stays static right here but it moves the signals you know where you're at there's a beacon down here in Orlando I'll use that for example okay so the beacon should be on CW <clears throat> you'll hear that in a second let's see I think it's running uh, 15 watts there it is okay and you can see that little line on there Okay. <clears throat> now, in, in certain situ uh, situations, that may be hard to find with noise. So we'll show you that too in a second. Now, um, so with that scope, as I said, moving it, you see I, I moved the, the display in the back, and I try to put the signal where the line is, and that tells me what frequency I'm on. Or you can do it this way. You can go to marker position and change, I'm sorry, center type, type display and change that to carrier point center. Okay and then uh, on carrier point. Now watch what happens here. Now the whole scope is moving, you see? The frequency is on the bottom and you can see there's the beacon so I can do this. But if I see a signal up here, rather than telling me it's 10 kC or 10 kilohertz above me, I can see it's at 144.29. So now I can scroll over like this and center where it is and find that signal. But it gets better. I mean, you could also touch on the screen and touch right there to be put right where the... 
you know, you could tap on the screen and touch on the, if your finger's good, touch on where the signal is. But watch this. Uh, if I go on the bottom here to span, now the span is, like we said, 25 kilohertz above the center and 25 below. That's 50 kilohertz slice. Watch what happens if I span it up 100, 200, 500, or even 1,000 kilohertz. That's basically, if you look at the bottom here, that's roughly 144 to 145 megahertz. I get the entire 1,000 kilohertz slice. And I can see what's happening in different places. With doing that, I'm taking in more signal and you can see the noise came up. Now it may, in certain situations, make it harder to find that weak signal. So this is what you do. You can go into number two here and you can go to reference. Now watch this, ready? I can turn the reference down now. Look what's standing out. That little CW signal there, right? Look, that's what's showing up on my waterfall. Now, that, now you see another blip here. What's that blip? Well, that actually happens to be APRS that you're seeing right there. There's APRS. So I can see down here at the beacon, I can see some APRS. And if there was some satellite up here, I'd be able to see that all at the same time. Okay. To look at this here, I could show you something to example or make an example of the max hold. Now, the APRS frequency will wait till that pops up. I'll turn the reference back up just a little bit. There's the APRS right there, right? But if it's not happening, it's gone. You don't see it there. Now watch, I'll turn on the um, max hold to 10 seconds. Now watch, as soon as that APRS signal happens, it's going to keep right there. Now I could see where that signal was, that little blip here. And then I know, okay, it's down here. And I could scroll down a little bit. And I could wait for it again. And when I see it pop up, it'll have a little peak hold there. And I could really dial into where that signal was. But in doing so, every little bit of noise, see, there it is again. So every little bit of noise that comes in also keeps that max hold on the background. That's why I turn it off. You get static crashes and the entire waterfall will have that max hold for 10 seconds. So it makes it kind of cluttering on the waterfall. So there's APRS, right? There's the beacon down here and there's a thousand kilohertz slice there. I turned the reference down, but now what I'll do is I'll go down here and I will change the uh, lines and the colors on the waterfall to make it a little bit easier for me to see. You can see all the little static crashes popping in, right? So we'll go back into set and we'll go down here to page two. Now the averaging is another important thing. The averaging is kind of like a AGC, I guess. It kind of smooths things out. So we'll do, uh, we'll go to, uh, let's say three, okay? Now look what happens. It kind of smooths out the rough edges. It's not so much of a real sharp, you know, hit. It's, it, it's a little bit smoother when you see that pop in. I like that. Um, to zoom back in here so we could have a smaller span. Let's go uh, 20 kilohertz. We'll go up here towards APRS like this, just so you can see a signal on the waterfall. Should be right around somewhere here. So the averaging um, basically smooths it out, makes it a little nicer to see. Easy come, easy go. Instead of a real harsh, you know, uh, spot there on the waterfall. So uh, we'll go back into the setting again and uh, waveform. So I'm gonna turn this on to fill plus line, okay? And you may not notice anything yet until I change the color, so let's do that. The first thing is the waveform color. I'm gonna turn that to black because that's how I like it to look. I'll show you. That's gonna be the fill inside the line. Now, the waveform color, I want the line to be orange on this one. I have it green on uh, my 7300. I kinda want it orange on here. And I want the, the max hold to be just black. Okay. Now look what this is going to do. This is going to make it an orange outline with a black fill. And it kind of stands out when you're looking at signals. Let's go down here to the, uh, the beacon. Okay. We'll turn the reference back up because we're in a smaller uh, band span here. Okay. I'll just turn the reference right here. Now you'll see that CW pop up. There, right there. 
they, it's like a orange line outside with a uh, black fill inside. And I think that really stands out. That makes it a lot easier on the eyes to find that little signal there. And if you turn the reference up a little bit more, it'll stand out more. But at some point, you're going to get so hot that it's going to bring in all the other noise. It raises the, the uh, reference level and becomes a little noisy. If you left it all the way up, you would see it real bright on the uh, waterfall here on the pan adapter. And you could see a really high spike there. But I like to bring the reference down so that I only see that signal like that. That makes it stand out over all the noise. Okay? see it right there and then uh, so I've changed the way the waterfall moves the color so let's go back into the set here in the menu and you can change the waterfall speed uh, mid fast slow or you could change it here like if you're looking at this here right you could also change the speed down to oh look and now it looks like an FT 991 oh that wasn't that was that wasn't that was uncalled for that was so mean <laughs> Anyways, you can see it makes it a little choppier and slow. Uh, not to compare, but uh, I, again, you look at the difference and you can really see what an amazing uh, way in, of a fluid motion here and how nice this looks. Anyways, we'll turn this back down like this. Okay. Uh, so you can change the speed. You can also go back into the menu here and go to page four. Uh, waterfall peak color level. You can change that with different ones. And what this will do. You turn out to grid one. Now you can see how that makes it. Uh, it changes the. How do you how do you explain that? The the peaks. Um, if you're in a really noisy area, you can dial down or dial up the uh, the coloring and the the uh, peak. You can see what it did here on the waterfall. Okay. You can also go in here and go back to grid four. See, and it kind of gives you a little more of an. Uh, active peak on here for the color but if you turn it all the way to eight you can see what it does it kind of changes that so it depends on how strong your signals are how much noise is in your area how much you want to see so we'll dial that back down to like a two okay gives me a little more if there's a, a real strong signal it'll be dark red and if there's a weak signal it'll be uh, lighter blue so I can kind of see there um, what, what the difference is, okay? And uh, waterfall size, you can make that large like this if you want more waterfall and less spectrograph or you want small like this, okay? So you'll have more here looking for peaks and less of the waterfall. I kind of have it balanced in the middle. You can see what that does for you. I kind of have it in the middle like this, okay? But at that point, Look at that right now and tell me that doesn't make it more powerful than a dual band or a tri-band rig. Uh, even, even the 7100 just blows it away. The 991A, I think it blows it away. Uh, the, uh, you know, I don't know too many other, uh, I, I'm, I haven't played with a 910, but I'm pretty sure the ICOM 910 uh, all mode VHF UHF does not have this. So this is by far an advancement to what you're looking for if you're serious in the VHF UHF. Uh, the same applies with UHF. I don't have my UHF Yagi up at the moment, and 1.2 gigahertz. Although the, you know, the band uh, spread on 1.2 is a little bit different, so your settings or your noise level or your width might be a little different if you're up into 23 centimeters. But regardless, you can see it makes it definitely uh, much different. And uh, if we span this out a little bit, we'll go. Uh, that's. Uh, 100 kilohertz and see what it's doing it's making that waterfall real bright because now I'm taking in more noise or more of the band so I'll go here and change the peak color to 8 and I'll kind of bring that down a little bit and the same thing could happen if you're on FM maybe you don't do sideband or CW maybe you want to see if there's more repeaters in your area and monitor a few different repeaters at one time on a scope and go to FM here say up here to uh well if we stay in the simplex range here 14652 and you can change the span to uh let's go all the way up to one kilohertz wide one kilohertz thousand uh, hertz wide and then if a repeater came on around uh if you had simplex station around 14652 you'd see it there at the same time, you'd see a repeater, 146850 over here. 
you can see a bunch of FM activity as well. And um, you might notice that there's a repeater here or there that you didn't even know was there. Or people that work simplex and they talk, uh, you know, locally and they're on every morning on 14652. You may not know they were there until you see them on the waterfall. Really see quite a bit here uh, in, in one slice on the pan adapter. So I'm rambling, but you get the idea. 7-3 guys, thanks for watching. And I hope this video gave you a little insight as to why everybody wants this 9700. KJ4YZI.